Dead Space, a game that is often heralded as the scariest game of all time. Well, I mean, it, it isn't. Whatever. Regardless of whether the first game is as scary as they wanted it to be, the first Dead Space game led to one of the most popular horror game series of the early 2010s. And that's what makes its downfall all the more upsetting. The original Dead Space released on the 14th of October 2008 and was met with critical acclaim. The game originally began development as the third installment in the much beloved System Shock series. This is something that hasn't been confirmed by EA on whether it actually was System Shock 3 or not, but it seems likely that it was because designers Ben Wana and Wright Bagwell who were designers on Dead Space, confirmed this in an interview with PC Gamer. The reason that System Shock didn't become a trilogy was because of Resident Evil 4's impact on EA's Redwood Shores. This led to Glenn Schofield wanting to basically make Resident Evil in space. Some of my influences uh, to make Dead Space from the game industry were definitely the, the Resident Evil series. And Resident Evil 4 had just come out. One of the things I would say to the team is uh, we're going to make Resident Evil in space. The inspiration from RE4 led to the team refining the tank controls in that game, allowing the player to strafe and move whilst aiming a weapon. And much like Resident Evil 4, the game wasn't really survival horror. I'd risk saying it's more survival than the actual RE4, but it's a far cry from things like the PS1 RE games or the first four Silent Hill games. You're never really running low on health and ammo pickups, and the ability to dismember body parts was also a neat feature. I loved the first Dead Space. I really enjoyed how every level was its own little Metroidvania, as every level was non-linear except maybe the last level. It's had, or lack of had, um, as you know, health and ammo and objective markers are, are diegetically placed into the game world on your suit with something called a rig. And upgrading through the use of power nodes felt very simple and satisfying to do. There's also a lot of replay value, as on different playthroughs you can make use of different weapons and use the power nodes to upgrade different things. The stasis and kinesis abilities add another dimension to the gameplay. Kinesis is essentially just telekinesis, which lets you pick up and move objects, and you can throw them at necromorphs, the enemies in the game. Stasis lets you slow down both enemies and objects, which gives you more of an advantage during combat as they move slower. The environmental storytelling is also really well done, with the game's setting, the USG Ishimura, being a place that felt lived in and also made you wonder what went so wrong before your arrival. I'd say that Dead Space surpasses Resident Evil 4, the game it took so much inspiration from. Sometimes I just like to call Dead Space Resident Evil X. The necromorphs are easily some of the most intimidating enemies in any video game, and the art style is amazing, especially Isaac Clarke's suit. EA clearly wanted Dead Space to be one of their flagship IPs, but because it was a horror game, it didn't quite sell as well as something like Halo, Call of Duty or Mass Effect. EA clearly overestimated the impact the game would have, with them releasing comics, animated films, and even a spin-off Wii game, which I've heard is maybe quite good, so, I mean, you know. I loved the first Dead Space so much, I bought it twice! Now, Dead Space 2 was developed by Visceral Games, which was formerly Redwood Studios, the developers of the first game, and it was released on the 25th of January 2011. The game definitely leaned into the action slightly more than the first. Many people preferred it over the first game. Personally, I didn't. I definitely think it was a great game and kept the majority of what made the first game so great, but something was definitely missing in this one. 
I absolutely loved the way that there wasn't a single cut during the entire game from start to finish. We are practically over Isaac's shoulder the entire game up until at least the final cutscene. There are also some brilliant suit designs which I feel are more varied and unique compared to the first game as the suits in this game aren't just more complex versions of the same suit though I do prefer the suit from the first game. It's also very graphically impressive, with the game looking like something that released in 2015, as though it's a cross-generation title. The game was so demanding that they actually had to split it up into two discs, like something on the PS1. I don't think the gameplay is as well refined though. It feels like there's more enemies coming at you from all directions, which was something I felt the first game handled better than this one. Dead Space 2 just starts sending droves of enemies at you w within like the first couple hours of what is a nine hour game. I found it easy to become sandwiched between enemies often, which was just a bit frustrating if anything. At least the weapons were still quite good and the dismemberment system remained solid. I wasn't as keen on how they handled Zero-G segments though, with them feeling just kind of puzzle related a lot of the time and I didn't like the little holographic thing that hovered over the ground when you could land, it just didn't feel as good somehow. I also really liked the game's larger setting as it felt as though the stakes were matched with its slight shift in gameplay. It does still have some genuinely scary moments at times, I just think it's a little less relentless when compared to Dead Space 1. Unfortunately, the non-linear level design is almost completely absent in this game. There's only a handful of occasions where the level allows you to go off the beaten path but there are like zero opportunities to do objectives in diff any different order than the, the one the developers had planned out for you. If anything, it probably had the better story of the two, which was aided by the fact that Isaac Clarke was no longer a silent protagonist, which is something I quite like, but I can live without him, you know, with him speaking in this one. The cutscenes in this game look great, and the motion capture and voice acting really make it all the better. This looks like one of the most expensive games ever made, partly because it was. The overall budget was $120 million, with $60 million being evenly split between both the game itself and its marketing. The game's marketing was pretty memorable, if a little strange, with campaigns like Your Mom Hates Dead Space 2. Admittedly, it is pretty funny to watch, and it was my first exposure to the series all the way back in 2011. So Dead Space 2 isn't a perfect sequel, but it is good, and it definitely lays the groundworks for future sequels to improve upon. So Dead Space 3. Released on the 5th of February 2011, Dead Space 3 was the death of the Dead Space franchise. EA felt that the series needed to take a more action-oriented approach. You'd think that Dead Space 2 would have been enough for them, but no. Dead Space 3 was originally intended to be slower paced than the second game, much more in line with the first Dead Space, but EA felt that audiences would want something much, much faster, so they introduced co-op, which was something they'd wanted to implement into the first Dead Space game, they did, however, add multiplayer into the second Dead Space. Dead Space 3 is horrifically bland. Everything that made the first two games special is completely absent in this one. The game is very linear, and it pretends it isn't, but it's, it really is a simple case of go here, do this. The signature art style of the first two games is pretty much gone, replaced with generic sci-fi crap. Necromorph designs lack the distinctive looks they used to have, appearing much less threatening on top of all that. Even the suits don't look as cool. Graphically it's great, but it's overshadowed by how unimpressive the art style is this time around. Areas feel empty and with little to no world building, which is very much a far cry from the first two Dead Space games, 
When you compare the locations featured in Dead Space 3 to the locations like the USG Ishimura and then the sprawl from Dead Space 2, there's no competition for what's better. The game also lacks the intensity found in the last two. There's no mystery, no build-up or anything to make you feel tense. It doesn't help that there was very little in ways of difficulty. The last two games provided a good challenge, if a little frustrating at times in Dead Space 2. The weapon upgrading system has changed entirely as well, being nigh unrecognisable from the previous games. Instead of collecting power nodes that upgraded your suit and its many functions, as well as your arsenal, it could, which could simple, simply be used at a workbench. Instead, in this game, you run around collecting pieces of junk and scrap metal. On paper, this sounds alright, but its execution is very poor. It's slow, tedious, and poorly explained. It's made worse by the fact that there's always a downloadable content option always staring at you in the face. This was one of EA's earliest attempts to force microtransactions down your throat. Listen, I hate microtransactions as much as the next guy, but if you're going to do them at all, don't put them in actual gameplay. When you are actually in the game, all it will do is take you out of it. Oh, and the way stasis is introduced is so spectacularly lazy in this game too, as it's so overblown, it results in this completely pointless action sequence that is so mindless it, it almost completely goes over my head. Weapons in this game blow chunks, metaphorically speaking of course. To start off they're quite slow and unsatisfying but as you play they eventually become overpowered to high heaven with you being able to make crazy combinations of weapons like a rocket launcher shotgun. Dead Space's weapons were very unique because they were mining equipment being repurposed to kill space zombies. Instead, Dead Space 3 goes with the typical video game lineup of assault rifles, shotguns and rocket launchers, which is far less inspired than the first two games. There are also two less weapon slots than usual, meaning instead of being able to have four weapons in your inventory at the same time, you can now only have two. This hurts the game as the you don't use as many weapons, so the sort of gameplay becomes a bit more stale, because I mean, you're rarely gonna use anything other than the two weapons you've got equipped, because you can just constantly upgrade them, meaning you're probably unlikely to use quite a lot of the weapons the game has to offer. This ties back into the lack of difficulty that I mentioned earlier as they didn't properly figure out how to balance the weapon customization, meaning you can become really overpowered. I don't blame Visceral Games for how off course Dead Space 3 went. It was EA's fault. They completely bastardized the vision they had for the game during its conception. EA failed to understand what made Dead Space and they forced it to comply with what they believed audiences wanted. EA was clearly taking a page out of Capcom's book with how they were handling the Resident Evil series. So I basically blame Resident Evil 6 for Dead Space 3. Maybe it's a better game than Dead Space 3, but it's the same instance of a developer forcing a horror-based series into an action skin that just doesn't quite fit. At least they knew what it was with Resident Evil 6 and embraced the action stupidity fully. Dead Space 3 is a bland action game and a terrible horror game and people back when it released agreed. So Dead Space was killed off by this entry and it underperformed when it came out, which means it actually did quite well. But because EA are just in absolutely insane, it underperformed by not selling 5 million units, which is just insane. And because it didn't sell 5 million units, that wasn't enough for EA to justify the creation of a Dead Space 4. Though it does seem history is repeating itself, as EA seems to be taking yet another page out of Capcom's book by 
remaking Dead Space? It's undeniable that the recent Resident Evil remakes have been a huge hit for Capcom. Though I do have the unpopular belief that they're not very good remakes, choosing to omit several aspects that made the original so good, you know, this is especially present in the remake of Resident Evil 3 last year. I do enjoy playing through them. As their own thing, they're solid and well made. I had a really, really fun time with Resident Evil 3, as the gameplay had been refined to a point where it just feels so smooth and fun to play. And Jill Valentine portrayed, was portrayed to perfection by Nicole Tompkins. Anyway, back to Dead Space. On the 22nd of July this year, EA announced officially they'd be remaking Dead Space with a teaser that looked, well, awesome, but Dead Space doesn't need a remake. It doesn't need one at all. People say they're excited to play a Resident Evil remake style version of the first game, but they seem to forget that the Resident Evil remakes are already taking a hell of a lot of influence from the first Dead Space because they did the modern over the shoulder gameplay before Resident Evil had perfected it. From both a graphical and gameplay standpoint, Dead Space doesn't require a remake. The graphics for the time were incredible. And as I've now stated on numerous great occasions, the controls were amazing. What makes the remake worse is that it spits in the face of Visceral Games, who were shut down by EA back in 2017, after years of being shafted by the company. So far, Nobody is returning from the previous games to work on this one. The entire creative team who made Dead Space brilliant is absent. Now, Glenn Schofield, the creator of Dead Space, is working on a new sci-fi horror game called The Callisto Protocol for next-gen systems, and it looks pretty swenchant. But the Dead Space remake, while graphically awesome, appears to do nothing new. All EA needed to do was do a simple remaster of the first three games, and maybe then consider a fourth if they do well, but not like five million units or whatever, or any of that out outlandish crap that they tried to pull. It appears the Dead Space remake is just going to be a shinier version of the first game. This could possibly be the video game equivalent of the bloody Psycho remake from 1998 with Vince Vaughn. God damn it, EA, can't you just do something new, something original? Would it kill you, you big bunch of bloody bastards?